When I finished university, I got offered um, a PhD in the history of medicine at Imperial College, and I was actually going to go and do that. And I had this really, 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 really bad interview where I was so flustered, I couldn't hardly remember my own name. And I called it short, it was like in a panel of academics, and I got up and walked away and opened the door and it was a broom cupboard. And I got in and closed the door behind me and stood there going, I'm in a broom cupboard. And I had to open the door, go hi, creep across the room again and leave. And I was like, okay, that's the universe telling me not to be an academic. I wanted to work in journalism and I had been freelancing when I was at university and it's just, it's really competitive in London. And, um, you know, you have to like have just like be over-educated and like have a real angle. So um, I did um, policy and economics at the London School of Economics and then started working at the FT after that. I was sort of writing about health policy and biotechnology sort of across all of their um, publications. I even wrote a book about biotechnology in Russia, would you believe? A couple of senior journalists at um, the Financial Times and the Sunday Times uh, had this startup dot-com company which was in the whole dot-com boom and they headhunted me to go and work for them and that was pretty much like working in a production company really similar sort of vibe and type of work and then when I came back here and didn't have a clue what I wanted to do and didn't even know what a producer was actually and then when I discovered what a producer did I thought oh yeah that kind of fits me I think I'd quite like to do that mm -hmm. Robin Scholes sort of took me under her wing and um, was looking for a documentary for us to do together and so I was researching documentary ideas and she managed to get funding for Colin McCann I Am, which was a feature link doco. And um, so I produced that. When I'd nearly finished, um, TVNZ said, oh no, she can't be the producer. She hasn't actually produced anything. And Robin was like, welcome to the world of television. I was like, okay, great. She said, look, just keep doing what you're doing. Take the associate producer credit and chalk it up. My huge memory of that show was driving up and down to Whangarei like a lot, every day sometimes and I crashed my husband's car about three times doing that and he still went, he's still got the same car and I'm still not allowed to drive it. What is the most successful television export in the history of New Zealand television? Oh, really? It's done really, really well. It screens in like over 120 countries, but we really packaged it as well. Like Phil wrote a really catchy jingle that we, um, um, you know, that we got composed and, um, you know, that actually is selling phenomenally well as well, still. Oh, the actual jingles. The jingle, yeah. You know, he's a lion man, <laughs> doing what he can, can't sing. <laughs> so Phil and I went in and pitched Katerina when I was eight months pregnant with my third child and she loved the idea and we developed it a bit more and it went into New Zealand on air and I'll never forget Phil Smith calling me so excited that we'd got the funding and I had like I, my baby was like five days old I had this just this whole sinking feeling of oh my god because we had to turn it around really quickly and um, we had like six weeks to develop the scripts and then shoot it and we were delivering it and it was on air while we were still shooting and cutting actually. It was incredibly fast turnaround so I got off the phone and went and said to my husband, how do you feel about moving down to Queenstown next week? <laughs> my poor baby spent the first few months of her life um, under my desk and I learnt how to how to type like this. <laughs> Truant, um, yeah, was my first producer credit, and um, you know, I really didn't have much of an idea what I was doing. Um, but it's, I'm so proud of that film. <laughs> it's beautiful, and it still really stands up. Short films are really, really important for producers because they teach you. 
um, the nuts and bolts si side of, of making drama and you know once you get to a, a certain budget level you always have a line producer but to really effectively creatively produce you need to know how to balance the sort of the fiscal and the creative. You know Trill is a really amazing learning curve for me. That was an incredibly ambitious shoot. Um, I don't know if you've seen the film, but the uh, visual effects are incredible. I mean, it's fog. Fog, water, and teenage sex. It was, it was you know, I don't know, quite not easy. And, um, you know, it's amazing. It's a beautiful film. Apron Strings was an incredible experience just in terms of um, the production was just an absolute dream. Nothing was an issue, there were no issues. It's almost like there were no fires to put out, which is um, unusual for a producer. The Cult was a hard production, you know, we were shooting like Loads of nights, um, midwinter, freezing cold, mud, rain, like, you know, it was really, it was a difficult shoot and not quite enough money to achieve what we wanted to achieve, so everyone was just really pushing it to the max. And I got this call from the first AD, I oh, know it was the director actually, saying, um, Scott has just, who's the, and his character is like the big bad guy of the series that we couldn't write him out of who's really suddenly really physical and about to really actively go into the final part of the series. Got this call saying Scott's just snapped his Achilles tendon. You know, which you can't walk if your Achilles tendon snapped. I was, I was just like, oh my God. Jumped in my car, went out to set, like arrived like it was, you know, everything's fine, brilliant, oh my god, you know, what a disaster, but we'll get through it. And had seen Scott beforehand and he was like, look, I'll do whatever it takes, I want to help you finish this series. Which was incredible of him, so yeah, we wrote it in. We wrote in the inj injury so that we could have him on crutches. And it was actually a good thing for the series. Because it gave his character, we had to be really clever about the character's motivations and the direction where he went emotionally with that change in direction. And it really gave the character um, a, a, lot, a lot of more layers. The actor that really stood out for Kathleen Anderson, the network executive, and I for the cult leader was, was Latham Gaines. And like we were just like, Oh my God! Like he's a, he is literally the cult leader, and he became the cult leader through the show. It was so scary. He's subsequently become a really good friend, and you know, I don't know. He, he was almost like he was method acting the entire time he was on set. It was brilliant. We got Million Dollar Catch commissioned, and uh, needed to start shooting it immediately because we were just about to go into the crayfishing season like the following week and we were like racking our brains for you know who would be the best producer and um, uh, he rang me up one night at about 11 o'clock and said I've got it I know exactly who can do, do it he's done he's done a series called Tuna Hunters Ocean Zoo I think it's Martin Cleave I was like isn't he in the OTR spinal unit like Martin literally had broken his neck like not that many months earlier and had been in the Otaris Mummy unit paralysed for months. The poor guy was just like literally out of the unit sort of doing his physio getting back on his feet again and Phil rings him up saying hey how about going down to Bluff and just shooting a show on some crazy crazy crayfish boats. <laughs>